Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the Hanyang VFD and how to wire it. In video number two, this will be a two-part series. In the second video we'll go over how to program it and also how to uh, kind of get it set up for serial control from your uh, control computer, assuming your controller has uh, a driver for it. So this VFD has been showing up on eBay quite a bit. I know Automation Technologies Inc. is selling it now. Uh, I got mine because I bought a high frequency spindle for my G0704 milling machine and then I never used it. So when I did the one horsepower three phase VFD for my, uh, or motor upgrade rather, for my G0602 CNC, mil, uh, CNC lathe, I already had this VFD on hand so I just decided to go ahead and use it. And the worst part really is just that the manual is, it has very little instruction and it's just not helpful at all. There are some videos on YouTube already of other people who have uh, helped helped you get up and running with this uh, VFD and they helped me get up and running but I wanted to make my own videos anyway. Uh, let's see here. I've got a whole list of things I want to talk about. So down in the description real fast there's three links. Uh, you'll find a link to my Google Drive where there's a zip file that has the PDF manual for this VFD as well as a couple of pictures and a readme document that I put together hopefully to help you get up and running a little bit uh, more quickly. There's a link to a serial adapter that you can use if you decide you want to have serial control. Um, and then also there's a link to engineeringtoolbox.com wire gauge chart, which I'm going to show you a printout of here in just a minute when we talk about wire gauge sizes uh, when you're wiring up your uh, VFD and your motor. Uh, Linux CNC version 2.7 and later has the software driver built in for this VFD, which I think is fantastic. They have some drivers for other VFDs, I think like Tico Hitachi, uh, Automation Directs, GS2, not the GS3 though, sorry, uh, at least not at this time. And uh, yeah, it makes it really nice because Linux CNC can easily talk to this VFD. Um, if you're using version 2.6 or earlier, you have to install the VFD manually, but if you do a little bit of searching online, you'll find a link to the GitHub where you can download the 2.6 uh, or previous driver to install it manually and you'll figure it out. It's actually pretty easy. If you're using Mach 3, 4, or some other control, I can't help you. I've never used any of those, and I don't know what drivers they have for various VFDs, whether or not they're supported natively, or even if the driver's been written so you can install it manually. Um, okay, I think that's it. So we're going to talk about wire sizes. Now, in the U.S., you're going to have uh, probably 10-gauge wire on your 220 circuits. So... I've got 10 gauge coming into my shop and then uh, I just ran 14 gauge to the VFD uh, because 14 gauge will support, uh, uh, 14 gauge solid I should say, will support 15 amps and in fact your house should be wired with 15 amp breakers running 14 gauge wire. Uh, your 20 amp breakers will have 12 gauge wire. But because uh, 14 gauge can support 15 amps and this is only a 10 amp VFD, uh, I've got plenty of headroom and in fact my one horsepower three phase motor only pulls three point like three point two amps so 14 gauge is going to be plenty big uh, if you want to run bigger that's fine it's not going to hurt you I, I think you could get away with running smaller frankly but usually you're not going to have um, smaller solo solids uh, ran into your house now if you're using stranded wire that's where I'm going to pull up this uh, this handy printout. Um, here it's got amperage ratings uh, for you know single core up to three core, various uh, finer and finer wires. So if we go down here to uh, 14 gauge for instance and we come over to up to three core you can see there's our 15 amp rating. So uh, yeah it's 14 gauge is overkill. That's basically what I'm getting, getting to. Uh, you can wire it up however you want and I mean the worst case scenario is you'll melt your wires or burn your house down. Um, I think you'll be okay though. Now, let me go ahead and zoom you in real close. We'll take a closer look at these conductors and what pins are being used uh, to get this VFD up and running. So these two uh, 110 legs over here, this is my 220 volts between these two legs, are pins RS, that's Romeo Sierra. Then the white pin, or the white wire over here uh, is either gonna be pin E or it's gonna have a ground symbol. So uh, those are my three 14 gauge wires. Now. In the United States, if your house was built before the mid-90s, you likely only have three conductors on your 220 circuits. That's the case in my house. So you're only going to have the option of running a hot, hot neutral. 
if your house was built after the 90s or mid 90s and uh, your you know local government upgraded to national code then you probably are going to have four conductors running into your house which is even better because then you can run your hot hot neutral and you can tie your ground leg uh, to your uh, wherever your chassis ground is mine's down there in that mess uh, I don't have that though so it's just uh, hot hot neutral uh, these three larger wires, um, if you can see them, black, white, and red, those are 12 gauge. And the reason that they're so big is because when I went to buy wire, that's just what the place had. And so I bought it because I was in a hurry. Um, you could probably get away with, according to this chart, uh, I think you could probably run off of 18 gauge. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. 18 gauge. And if we come clear over here. Yeah, three and a half to four amps. Um, Maybe 16 gauge would be a little safer, but uh, you really don't need a lot of wire, especially over short runs. You don't need large gauges um, to power, you know, three and a half amp, one horsepower motor. Uh, now, three phase motors are self balancing, so there's no neutral. So that's why we just have the three conductors black, white, and red. Those are pins UVW, that's Uniform Victor Whiskey. And, uh, when you buy your wire though you still want to buy four conductor wire because your fourth one is going to be the ground there'll be a ground lug on your motor and like you might guess you're going to tie that into your grounding mess down there on your chassis so three wires in three wires out plus ground and then uh, these three 26 gauge wires in the front that green one is pin AMC, that's Alpha Mike Charlie. The white one is Romeo Sierra negative, RS negative. The black is RS positive, that's Romeo Sierra positive. And those are the ones that we're going to run to our uh, our serial port. I'll show you a picture right here of what mine looks like. And uh, we'll discuss that more in video number two. So that's it. Follow these uh, simple steps and you can have your VFD wired up in no time. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. I will see you in the next video.